This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Ben Settle, compulsively punchable. He's the kind of guy who you'd probably just punch on the arm really hard if you ever met him. Worshipped by feminists. He pokes fun at feminism and women, you know, just joking around, this whole like sandwich making thing. Mildly inspiring. Yes, I recommend the Ben Settle show, and anybody who isn't on it, that's their own loss. Somewhat authentic. Ben is a very distinct personality. There's no fluff. I can't stand fluff. Syrupy sweet. Tells it like it is, and sometimes may not be the most polite manner, shall we say. Kind of useful. So I have spent tens of thousands of dollars on coaching and masterminds, and I've learned more from Ben Settle's podcast than from any of that. Semi intelligent. Ben sounds like a a crazy guy at times, but he's one of the smartest individuals in marketing I've ever met. Mostly forgettable. He's always in the forefront of my mind. The bensettle.com podcast begins now. This is Ben Settle, the bensettle.com podcast. Jonathan, last week, we're going to move on from all the talk of pubic hairs and poops, dog poops and pooping on sacred, all that stuff. We've been, we're going to go in another direction. Oh boy. (laughs) <laughs> the following is not really business advice of any kind, but it all applies to, you know, I've used it in business for just general business success, marketing, all that. But okay, so I got this question a few months back and it goes like this. Hi, Ben. Thanks for the podcast. Loving it. You allude to writing in the dating niche, but under a pen name. And I do. I, I haven't done much with that because we just don't have a back end in place for it yet. So, I, you know, it makes sales and pays for itself, but it's like we haven't really exploited it, unfortunately. I just can't be bothered right now with this stuff, Jonathan. What can I say? But I did write a lot of emails and they do they do make a lot of sales on the front end. We just don't buy anything selling on the back end. Anyway, to continue his question, being freshly single, can you point me the direction of these, please? And then he signs it, JC. Now I'm not. I, I make it a policy not to give talk about that because I don't want marketing spies and all these people wanting to go there and swiping me and all that. Uh, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So it ain't going to happen. But what I will do, what I will do, Jonathan, for the men out there who are freshly single or they've been single for a very long time and they're tired of it. They're tired of being walked on. They're tired of being treated like crap. They're tired. They're tired. Tired of being ignored and passed up. You know, when they're perfectly fine people and they have a lot to offer, but they're just ignored by the girls and all that. I am happy to go through some of the best resources on this that have helped me out a lot, you know, over the years. Things that, you know, when I was freshly divorced, for example, I didn't, you know, I had, I had spent many years being a mush cookie, you know. So really? Like, I had like, un, oh yeah, I, I trust me, growing up, I was the mush cookie of all mush cookies, Jonathan. Believe me, I couldn't get a date with a pocket full of $100 bills. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> oh, I, just, I was oh, the worst. Oh. <laughs> I was repulsive in every po- a needy, repulsive, all that stuff, all of it. And, uh, you know, it didn't ta- it doesn't take long, though, to get out of that if you have the right direction. If you have a beacon to go toward, a beacon of light, which I will now be, Jonathan, for the people in the audience, the men in the audience who are in that situation, I will be their beacon of light and hope, okay? I will, I will take their problems, their silly little problems with girls, and we will fix that during this show, where at least they'll have all the resources they need. They kind of have to do the work. I can't do the work for them, obviously. Nobody can do that. You know, it's like asking someone to do all your work in your business for you. You know, you got to do it. I, I will say this, and I, I mentioned this last week. <laughs> ben, I, can I say this? I have to say this. You have to come up. The back end product is push button pussy. I think that'll sell. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that is interesting. That, that would, that, you've just given someone an idea. I, I, I <laughs> you know, I don't want to have to create a product. That's my problem. But, uh, you know, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah, you and I should talk about this. Because remember, we talked about doing a, a joint venture with you, me, and Doberman Dan doing yeah. direct mail. And you said you could do the product creation by just. Of course. What, let's, let's talk about that off the, off the air. <laughs> because now that I think about it, we could actually do a three-way joint venture with this. And I think it would work really well. We'll talk about that later. You see how business is conducted even on the air, Jonathan? We're just conducting business. And, and, and you know, hopefully people listening to this can understand how easy this is. It's very simple. You just tell people what you want, float ideas by them. If they say no, you don't get needy and try to bit pushy. You just let it go. Like if you said no, Ben, I have no interest in it. I just let it go. I wouldn't care. I'll go take it to someone else. But what do most people do when you tell them no? They, they get all they get all pushy and needy and everything. 
They get butt hurt. And this is one of the problems that these guys are having. I guarantee it when it comes to girls too. They're being pushy. They're being needy. They don't know how to take no. They don't know how to understand how to take rejection. They didn't reject you necessarily. I mean, maybe in some cases mm. they did, but depending <laughs> on how they're acting. You weren't there. They just, they, you just, you just, you know, there, it could be a 9,000 reasons that have nothing to do with you guys. Okay. It probably has nothing to do with them. A lot of it's message to market match and timing and all that. But anyway, so we're going to go through some of my favorite resources for this problem. And uh, I'll talk about a few lessons I've extracted from each one. But I could never, I, this would be like in this whole series. This could be an entire podcast series in itself if I wanted to go through every one, really, like all the things I've learned. Um, a lot of this can be applied to business. I, I, I'm going to warn the ladies, though, because I, I, I got to say this. Jonathan, I got to say this. Whenever I teach this kind of stuff, girls sometimes listen, they get excited and they think, oh, I got to start being, no, don't do what I'm talking about if you're a girl. Okay, we don't want you acting like guys. I'm just I'm speaking on behalf of all men. We don't want you being more masculine. Okay, so, so don't do it. All right, just do whatever you want. Obviously, I have no control over what you do, nor do I want to, but for your own sake. And I've had the, this conversation with girls who have read my villains book. They, they don't realize that it's, some of the stuff does apply to them you know, just general stuff. But if they let it turn them into someone they're not, you know, they're going to have problems and they're going to paint themselves in the corners that they're not going to be able to get out of. And that is a whole other <laughs> podcast I'm not going to get into. All right. So the first and most important resource I want every guy listening to the show right now, if you are having girl problems of any kind, is the Black Phillip show. There's 12 episodes. Each one's between two and two and a half hours. They were recorded between, I think, 2006 and 2008 or something like that. It's from the late Patrice O'Neill. They called it the Black Phillip Show. He's not Black Phillip. <laughs> Just so anyone listened to it, he's not, that's not his name. They called it the Black Phillip Show because they wanted to make him like the Dr. Phil, like, but his version of Dr. Phil, and he happens to be a black guy, so they, they call him Black Phillip. I don't know if that was a good name or not, but that's why they named it that. You can get these on YouTube for free. Uh, you can find, again, there's, there's only 12 of them. Sometimes people say there's 13, but there's not. There's only 12 episodes, and it, it will change. You know, I really recommend you listen to the, all of these episodes, which is a lot of, I mean, I don't know what that comes out to, 12 times, whatever, two and a half hours each. So it's a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of listening. I recommend you listen to them 10 times. I have listened to them all 10 times, Jonathan. Probably more than that. Wow. And uh, so it is. And I'll tell you what, you can do it while you're walking your dog. You can do it while you're playing video games. You can do it while you're driving. You know, you can listen to this stuff kind of like passively. It's not a big deal. But, you know, after the first one or two times, go ahead and just listen to it passively in the background. You'll pick stuff up. And it'll change the way you think about all this stuff. It'll change the way you deal with your business if you if you take it the right way. I don't agree with everything Patrice O'Neill said and did. I, I'm not endorsing his lifestyle. I mean, he he went and visited like South American hookers and stuff. I, I don't think you need to do that. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do everything he does. But the the timeless like wisdom and in, in, in this sort of stuff, okay, and just how to behave in a way where you're not a repulsive guy. And it's not pickup lines or any of that stuff. It's not. It's like all going to be mindset stuff. It's all you really need. It will make you a more attractive person. It'll make you a better marketer. It'll make you a better copywriter. And there are so many things I learned listening to his show, but here's three you can take away now. First was his king-queen theory. And I think we've talked about this on this show, that when the king's happy, the kingdom's happy, okay? When the queen's unhappy, no, her, she's a girl, okay? She has a vagina. That means that her feelings are changing all the time and her moods are changing. Guys are generally not like that. Now, some guys have been, unfortunately, <laughs> feminized up. Manginas. So I can say vagina up, okay? They're wearing pussy hats and all that to, <laughs> to virtue signal at rallies and all that. And they just, they don't realize how idiotic they are. But, you know, that's his theory. Like you, as a man, you've got to keep yourself happy. That's more important for you to keep yourself happy than to try to keep her happy. Because you cannot keep her happy. She needs to be sad sometimes. Jonathan, you're a married man. Cupcake needs to have a good cry sometimes, does she not? Yeah. I mean, isn't that what they do? <laughs> right? I'm afraid she might hear you this. You want to stop her from enjoying <laughs> no, that? She... Cupcake, you listen. Cupcake, oh, I know you're listening. I want to encourage and you. know it. I'm right about Get it. it out is what I tell her. Go ahead. Cry. Get it out. Get it out. Absolutely. And she should. She's an emotional creature. This is good for her. You can have a good cry. When, I know that I'm I'm loved and hated equally by girls I date. Okay? And that's how it should be. I don't try to chase their happiness around. So, and neither should you. You just focus on being happy and just doing, following your mission, basically, as we talked about. And, you know, she'll she, let her storm and, and do whatever she's going to. She'll come. She'll be fine. 
should be better off than if you sit there and try to constantly chase her moods around. Good luck with that. He also taught thing this thing where he likes saying options for thinking differently, which is something I, I just think is brilliant. You know, you give a girl an option for thinking differently. You don't have to agree with everything they say. In fact, a lot of times they're saying nonsense, probably. You should speak up. I, I'll give you an example. I was once having um, drinks with this, this girl I was dating last year at this local bar. And we were noticing this one guy had two pretty girls next to him. And he was like sitting between them. And he just didn't know what to do. He was floundering. He didn't know how to handle himself. Like he was boring these girls. You could just tell. And I, I, I told the girl I was hanging with, I said, you know what he should do? He should just argue with them about, just find something to argue with them about. <laughs> just find something to disagree with and just argue your point. And she looked at me like I was crazy at first, but then she thought about it. And she was, yeah, he actually, he should. <laughs> because give them an option for thinking differently. I do this in business too. My whole point of my business is to give my customers options for thinking differently. And, you know, so it is. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff. I I don't want to go over everything. I mean, again, we're talking over 25 hours of content here. It's it's free. It, it's, it will change. If you're having pro problems with girls, listen to the Black Phillips show, listen to it 10 times, and you won't have problems with girls anymore. I'm guessing. Unless you're just like really off the chart, Omega male or something. I don't know. All right. The next one is a spinoff of the Black Phillips show called the Beige Phillips show. So Patrice O'Neill's like partner in crime, secondhand guy, like first mate, whatever you want to call him. It's like his co-host was a guy named Dante Nero, comedian. He, he does the Beige Phillips show, which we've talked about on this show many times. It's the, his show is the, uh, you know, the inspiration for my email players rules and all that. He has Beige Phillips rules. And I believe it's a paid one now, or at least some of the episodes are paid. So I don't know if it's free anymore, but some of the earlier ones are especially are really good especially he has one that's all about just beige Phillip rules. And uh, one of the biggest lessons I took away from that one is that, and this is just the nature of, of women. They will love, they fall in love with a man for, for who he is, spends the rest of her time trying to change him into something he's not, and then leaves him for someone who is what he was originally. It happens so many times, Jonathan, it's so predictable. It, it's like clockwork. And uh, if you understand that as a guy, and I've written about this in email players too, if you understand that, you realize you don't change for you. Do not let them change you, okay? And and they're, they're and they don't do it maliciously. They're not they're not doing it maliciously at all. They don't even realize they're doing it half the time. And I've had this discussion with many many girls, okay? And they all admit eventually they will come to admit it. Even if I have to like you know spend hours arguing with them about it to get them into admit it, or maybe they just admit it to shut me up, Jonathan. I don't know. <laughs> it's the truth. And, and, you know, so it is. Don't let them change you. They fell for you for a reason. doesn't mean you can't make yourself a better person. Don't get me wrong. You should always be trying to strive to be a better person and all that and better at what you do. But you don't change for them because, oh, suddenly I want you to be sweeter. Oh, I wish you were sweeter to me. I wish you were nicer. No, she didn't fall for you because you were sweet. Okay, if, if that's the case. Or maybe, maybe, she, <laughs> you know, that's how she felt. She didn't want the sweet version of you. Jonathan Cupcake did not want sweet Jonathan, right? If you changed for her, if she started going on this kick saying you need to be sweeter and nicer and you actually did it, she would probably get very frustrated with you. Would, would you agree with that? You knowing your wife? She always tells me how mean I am and I tell her you're welcome. <laughs> it's not against the law for her to be wrong. Let's, <laughs> let's face that. That's not a problem. But see, that's her way of, 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 you know, that's her way of almost trying to get you to change without even realizing it. Now, most guys, weaker guys would, would say, oh, man, I better be much nicer. And then you just repulse her. So, you know, beige fill. That's one of many, 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 many things. I don't want to go into everything there because they've done like, I don't know, 200 episodes now. Wow. I don't even listen to all of them, but, but the early ones are, are my favorite. Okay, the next one. By the way, all these, <laughs> all the ones I'm talking about are very politically incorrect. They're all very politically incorrect. They are offensive to people who are easily offended. And this one is certainly part of that. And that would be hartisti.wordpress.com. Oh, Roycey. And I don't know how many writers there are for this blog, but this guy's been doing this for many, many years. And it used to be more about straight up pickup stuff, but it's gotten very political over the last few years, especially. So, you know, there's a lot of political stuff that has nothing to do with it, but there's also a lot of really good gems in there about how people behave and psychology and all that. Specifically, check out, if you're a guy, again, girls, girls listen, they're going to think some of this stuff's crazy, but we don't care what they think, Jonathan. We care about making ourselves happy on the bensettle.com podcast. And one way that's going to make you happy is to go to hartisti.wordpress.com and go to the tab at the top that says the 16 commandments of Poon. Jonathan, did you ever read the 16 commandments of Poon? <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> it is timeless wisdom that every guy should memorize. Like literally memorize that page. Memorize that page and do what it says and you will never have problems with girls ever again. I promise you. 
It's counter, it's counter to everything you're ever going to hear of anyone teach on this, um, especially in the mass media and all that. They would despise this guy. But I'm just telling you, go to hartisti.wordpress.com, go to the 16 Commandments of Poon. And, you know, there's a lot of guys listening to this show, Jonathan, who already have, who know what I'm talking about. They've read it. And I can already see them nodding right now. Yep. <laughs> They're just nodding because they know. Another one is alpha game, I said alpha game plan dot blogspot dot com. It's Vox Day. It's, he's got two blogs. He's got his regular blog, which is mostly politics. And then he's got this blog, which is about game, basically. And there's a lot of stuff you can learn from Vox Day about this stuff, too. One of which is he actually did a social hierarchy. Most people just like I'm I see a lot of problems, Jonathan, with this whole alpha beta thing. Like I, I kind of it's very it's way too uh, it's missing. It's too simplistic. And some of people aren't even pack animals as it is. <laughs> like You know what I mean? So but, you know, it does kind of it does illustrate a point. Well, he took that and put it into more than just alpha and beta. He's like alpha, beta, gamma, delta, lambda, sigma and omega. And if you go to alpha, alpha, what is it? Alpha plan, alpha game plan dot blogspot.com or just look up Vox Day Alpha Game Plan or something like that on Google. And I believe he has a link to the social hierarchy. I suggest reading it and intellectually, honestly assessing where you fit in it, not where you want to be, not where you think like where you think you are, but how people look at you. And most people are just deltas. It's, there's nothing wrong with it when you read it. And uh, but he shows you you can see where you are. You can now change your behavior accordingly to where you want to be in the hierarchy. And again, it has nothing to do with what you think you are, or how you feel about yourself. It's all about how others look at you. And it's a very, very, very interesting read. I highly recommend it. Another one, and this one, this this guy I disagree with a lot more than I agree with, but I still learned some huge, some pretty good gems out of it. And I talked about him not too long ago on the show, and it's the Black Dragon. I don't know what his website is, but just Google Black Dragon you know, game or something like that. And there's one thing I taught, I did a whole teaching about this, Jonathan, on this show. He did this thing, I don't do drama, right? Girl gives you drama, you say, I don't do drama, and you just cut off all contact for three days, you know what I'm saying? And it works like a charm. But there's stuff like that. that again, most of the stuff he teaches, I don't agree with. I really don't. I, I think that, you know, I, sometimes I think he's just trying to be different for the sake of being different, or he just really believes this stuff. I don't know. He's a very smart guy, though. Like, you can tell you're dealing with a very intelligent guy here. He just, I just don't necessarily, necessarily subscribe to some of things he is telling people to do. But I still think it's a good read for people who are having trouble with girls. If nothing else, it'll help you stop being needier just reading his stuff. Another one, this guy is, his name is Shark. I think it's FJ Shark or something like that. He has a book called How to Be the Jerk Women Love. If you can, you can find a, I believe if you, if you just Google his name, I think you can get it for free just by opting into his site. It is a must read for guys who have trouble with girls. How to be the jerk that girls love. I know that, the, I mean, I love the title alone. That, that's like one of the best book titles I've ever heard. It'll get your mind on track and it'll get you thinking the way you should be thinking. Doesn't mean being abusive, by the way. When he says jerk, he's not talking about being abusive, but you'll see what I'm talking about. There's another one. Now, this is a, a paid podcast that I used to, I subscribed to this one for about two or three years. It's, the guy's name is The Iceman. And it's, ask the, I believe it's asktheiceman.com. And he doesn't like white people, <laughs> Jonathan, nice. come right out and say that. But I still paid him $30 a month. I think it's a lot more now, but I paid him like $30 a month to get, he, he, he has a great business model, but it's the simplest business model you'll ever see. Like he's using PayPal, YouTube, and an email link basically is how it's, it's so simple. Like if this guy had any email marketing knowledge and this guy would just clean up, but yeah, you know, he talks a lot about society and about, you know, it's all, you know, he's taking, he brings it from the black point of view. That's where he's coming from. And he's the first to say it. I think he calls it Afrocentric point of view. That's what he calls it. He doesn't, I don't think he hates white people. He just doesn't like us very much. You know, we're for various reasons. And, you know, some of them are justified. Some of them are just, you know, paranoia in the typical nonsense. But yeah, he has, he has some really good points. But when he's talking about feminism and men and, and dating and all that, it's just, I'm telling you, it's some of the best information you'll get. That's why I paid this guy $30 a month. And not every podcast of his is like that, but, um, you know, you do have to pay for it, but he has some free shows up too. So if you go to his site, I believe he's got some free shows like on blogtalk.com and stuff. But very interesting perspectives from this guy. Highly recommend. The Iceman. And then finally, there's a movie, a kind of a hokey movie, though that did very well in the year 2000, called The Tao of Steve. And even though there's, it was written by girls and directed by girls, there's actually some pretty good nuggets in there. Surprise. I don't think this show could get made today, actually, this movie. But basically, this it's about this over underachieving, overweight, like slavish guy who just, girls just love him. And it's because of his rules of being Steve. And those rules are basically be desireless, be excellent, and be gone. Uh, if you watch the movie, you'll get the context. Very good stuff. So, Jonathan, I think those resources will keep 
the young tigers in the bensuttle.com audience who are having trouble in this area occupied, especially just the Black Phillips stuff alone. And uh, I highly recommend all these resources for the reasons I just said. And again, you'll be amazed at how much of this spills over into your business life. A lot of it will and make you better at that. So that's it for this time. Next time, Jonathan, we're going to talk about why you should tell people no, why you should tell customers no, why you should tell girls no. <laughs> well, everybody needs to be told no for their own good and for your own good. So it'll be an interesting, very, it'll be a little bit controversial, probably. Once in a while, we do controversy on here. And uh, that's next week. All right. Looking forward to it. So that is a wrap for the bensettle.com podcast. We'll be back in your earbuds next time. Thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to the bensettle.com podcast. To get your hands on a free issue of Ben Settle's prestigious $97 per month email player's newsletter, simply go to www.bensettle.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.